In Earth's history, there have been some truly monumental matchups. The Greeks versus the Romans, Rambo versus Gandhi, and a Tyrannosaurus versus a bigger Tyrannosaurus. But there's one matchup, and I'm not exaggerating at all when I say this, that eclipses them all. Curves versus levels. Which is the best tool and which one should you use? Stick around. Hi diddly ho there photoshopperinos and welcome to Professional Photography Tips. My name is Josh Cripps and you can find me on Instagram and Facebook at Joshua Cripps Photography. The two most common tools for adjusting brightness and contrast in Photoshop are levels and curves. But is there a difference between them and is one better than the other? The resounding answer to both questions is yes! But in order to understand why, we need to take a look at how the tools work. So let's start with levels. Let's delete this sucker so long and bring up a levels adjustment. Okay, so here's the levels window. Now basically what this is showing you is a representation of the RGB histogram for your image. Now let me expand this so it's sort of as big as we can get it. Well, it's not doing anything. Okay. Cool. So you got all your brightness values here from black on the left all the way to right on the white on the right, not right on the white. And you've got um, a couple of control points here. Basically, you've got this black triangle here on the left, the gray triangle in the middle, and the white triangle on the right. Now, as you probably know, those basically allow you to set your black point, midpoint, and white point for your RGB composite channel. So if I slide this up, it makes the image darker because I'm saying, you know, make this part of the histogram black and everything below that, make it below black. And the same thing if I slide this down on the right, it says this is my white point here and everything above that is above white. All right. Now it's also got these three tools here on the left, the black point eyedropper, the midpoint eyedropper, and the white point eyedropper. And those allow you to just more of a user-friendly way select your black point. So if you wanted to say, let's look at what might be the darkest part of the image, one of these shadows here in the reflection, you could say, this is what I want to be my black point. Now the thing you need to note when you click is that this will affect all of your color channels, not just your RGB. So when I click, you might see the image shift color as well as tone. Okay, so not a big color shift, probably because that rock is mostly color neutral. You see it made the image darker, kind of spread out the histogram a little bit. I can do the same thing with my white point. I can look for the brightest part of the image, probably this part up here, and click. And that just allows you to fully expand data to fill your entire histogram from black to white. So what does this midpoint slider do? That basically allows you to tell Photoshop whether or not you want more information above the midpoint in brightness or more information, information below the midpoint in brightness. So if I slide this down towards black, you're telling Photoshop, put more of the tonal information above middle gray so the image is getting brighter. And conversely, if I slide it towards white, you're telling Photoshop, put more of the image information below middle gray. In other words, make it black or darker. Cool. Let me put that back in the middle. In fact, I'm going to undo all of that by hitting this little reset button right here to take us back to the beginning. Fantastic. So what else does levels do? Well, you can also set your output levels, which is basically what your deepest black is and what your brightest white is. So if I slide this up, you'll see the image start to look a little bit washed out because I'm telling Photoshop Instead of my deepest black representing it being a zero value on the RGB scale and the brightness scale here, I want it to be a, a 20, let's say. So the deepest my black could ever get is this level of 20. And conversely, I can do the same thing. The brightest I ever want any of my whites to be is, you know, instead of 255, the maximum value for brightness, you can slide it down to whatever you want that maximum value to be. Okay. So that's the basics of what Levels lets you do. And in addition to the RGB channel, you can make those adjustments for your individual color channels. And here you've got the same tools, black, midpoint, and white. 
but here they don't actually represent black, mid, and white. A better way to think about it is the black one is zero color intensity, the white one is maximum color intensity, and the gray one is middle color intensity. So in other words, if you slide this black point up, you'll see the image getting more and more cyan. Because I'm working in the red channel, I'm telling Photoshop, hey, anything that I slide below this black slider should have zero red color intensity to it at all, which is why the image is getting more cyan. And if I do the same with the white point, I'm saying anything above this white point, I want to have maximum red color intensity, which is why the color gets more and more red as I slide that white slider down. The midpoint works the same as the RGB channel. If I slide it towards a black point, you're saying I want more of the tones above middle gray to have color intensity, so it gets redder to more. And if I slide it towards the white point, I'm saying I want more of the tones in the image to have less color intensity than this midpoint, less red color intensity than the midpoint, which is why it goes cyan. So that's how you can use the levels tool to adjust your brightness, contrast, color intensity, color balance, all that sort of stuff. So say you wanted to add a simple contrast adjustment to your levels. Well, you simply could just grab your black point, slide that in, grab your white point, and slide that in. If I turn that adjustment on and off, you can see, sure enough, I have added more contrast to my image. Cool. The other thing that Levels has, you can see up here it's got preset. Right now it's on custom because I've made my own adjustments, but you can just tell Photoshop, you know, I want this image darker, and it'll slide your black point up to darken it. Or you can say, I want to add a little bit of contrast, and it'll do the same thing that I just did, sliding the black and the white point in a little bit. You can tell it just to lighten the shadows, it moves your midpoint around. So it's got all these presets to get you there automatically. Okay, cool. So that is levels. Now, what I want to do, I actually want to reset this back to zero, so I'll hit my little reset button. So what's the difference between levels and curves? Let's take a look at the curves tool and see how those capabilities change. All right. Well, at first glance, this may look totally different and maybe a little more intense than levels. You've got this graph going on, and you're like, man, I haven't looked at graphs since I was in geometry in high school. you got all these controls over here on the left. you got this line in the middle. What the heck is that? Well, it turns out that curves is surprisingly similar to levels. Let's take a look, and I'll explain how. All right, so first off, we've got our histogram here, right in the middle, right? And it demonstrates the exact same histogram that our levels did. Now, the levels is maybe a little more easier to visualize because it doesn't have all those grids and lines and stuff going on, but it's the same histogram. Cool. You'll see we've also got our little black point slider here and our little white point slider here, and those work exactly the same as they do in levels. So if I slide this up, you know what, I need to turn off that setting. I've got it set to show clipping automatically as I slide my black point around. So if I slide this up, it makes the image darker, and if I slide this one down, it makes the image brighter, dialing in that same kind of contrast we did with the levels. I'm going to undo that. Okay, so that's pretty similar. Now, levels also had this midpoint. Does curves have a midpoint? Well, it does and it doesn't. It doesn't have a slider for the midpoint. Whoops. But what it does have is this line here, which connects your white point to your black point. And you can think of this line as your gray slider there in levels or here in curves. It's your levels, your curves equivalent of the levels gray slider. So if you just click right in the middle of this curve and drag it up, it's like doing the same thing with your gray point in levels. And if you drag it down, it's like doing the same thing with your gray point that we did here in levels, right? If I drag it, now the behavior is a, is a little bit opposite in that if I drag the gray point towards black, the image gets lighter, whereas if with curves, if I drag the image, the gray point down, the image gets darker. So it's a little more intuitive, but the behavior ultimately is exactly the same once you understand that. Let me reset all those back to zero. Okay, so that behavior is the same. Black point, white point, midpoint. What about the output levels that we had talked about? Does it have output levels? Sure it does. So if you want to control how deep the deepest possible black is, you can just hover your mouse over this little white square right here, 
and you'll see the move tool pop up and you can just drag that up and you'll see your output level here changes just like it did with levels so we're setting the deepest possible black at 18. You can do the same thing up here. Just click and drag on that control point to set the brightest possible white to something else than pure white if you choose. So that behavior's identical. Okay, now what about all this stuff going on here? Well, we got the same. We've got our eyedropper. We've got our black, black point selector. That works exactly the same. If I click here, you see it makes the same kind of adjustment. We've got our white point selector. And if I use that and click, it makes the exact same kind of adjustment. Cool. It's also got our gray point selector, which is very, very useful for designating what the actual middle gray point of your image is. Now with landscape stuff, this is less important, but if you're shooting with a gray car doing portrait type stuff, this can be a really, really useful tool. So those tools are all the same. So, so far, we're not seeing any differences at all between curves and levels, with the exception of how that information is presented. So what the heck is the difference? Well, Curves has a couple of ways that it stands out from levels. One is, it's got, you notice that I remember from earlier when I clicked and dragged on this curve to create, make the image brighter or darker, well, I created a control point here when I clicked. And I can actually create as many control points as I want, in contrast to levels where all you have is that middle gray point. So say I wanted to make my highlights brighter, well, then I could add a control point up here in the highlight realm on this curve. And just drag it up. But if I want my shadows to stay, or my midtones to stay at the same level, I can add another control point there in the middle and just drag that back to where it was. Now you see, because the curve fits both of those points, it kind of creates this S shape. So if I want my shadows to go back to where they were, then I've got to make another control point and click and drag that back to where it was. So now I've made tonal adjustments to three ranges in my photo, highlights, midtones, and shadows, all independently of each other. Only can do that with curves, cannot do that with levels. Very sweet. Now curves is also way more user friendly than levels. You see this little hand tool right here, because you know, I've kind of developed an intuition after doing a lot of Photoshop. I know what tonal values the various parts of my image represent. So I can say, you know what, if I want my shadows to be a little more contrasty, I can drag up a little bit here and drag down a little bit there, and I know that's going to affect my shadows. But that comes from years of use and instinct and intuition. If you don't know that, you can click on this little hand tool, and you'll see when you hover over your image, it brings up an eyedropper. And that eyedrop eyedropper allows you to click and drag up or down on any tonal range that you want to adjust within the image. So say you wanted your, this cloud right here to be maybe a little more contrasty. Well, I could click and drag on the highlight part of the cloud, drag it up, it's going to make it brighter. You see it automatically created a control point and drag that curve up. So how can I make it more contrasty? Well, simple, I'll just drag on the shadow part of the cloud, click and drag down, and you'll see it automatically added that control point. And by doing so, I've added contrast just to that particular tonal range. As you can see, that's a really easy way to target your adjustments to a specific tonal range using this hand tool. It's an absolute breeze and super intuitive to use. And it also works within your color channels. So say you wanted this mountain here to be a little less blue. Well, you could click on your blue channel and simply click and drag down with that eyedropper tool. And that'll make that, those particular tones a little less blue. Now, if you didn't want that to affect the sky, for example, you could just click and drag back up on the sky until it gets back to a level of blue that you want. Super simple. So Curves is very, very user-friendly once you get past the slightly more intimidating interface. And these are all good things, but the real place, the real wonderful spot where Curves absolutely stomps levels into the ground is with its ability to preserve highlight and shadow detail while still making tonal adjustments. So what the heck does that, that fat lot of jargon mean? Let me show you. So if I jump back to my levels adjustment here and say I wanted to add some contrast. Let's do it via a preset and this will be perfect to show you. Okay, let's say I want lots of contrast. Increase contrast three. Before I do that, Take a look over here on the right at the histogram. You can see that, in fact, let me change this to 
Uh, no, that's fine. I'll leave it as is. Okay, so you can see that there's a big spike near the far, far left, and there's a small spike at the far right. So I already have a little bit of clipping on the right and a, maybe a tiny bit on the left. If I hit increase contrast, see how it slides that black point in, slides that white point in? Well, what, I've, what Photoshop has done is said, this point is now black. So everything below that is lost data. And this point is now white, so everything above that is also lost data. And if you take another look here at the histogram, what's happened is those tiny little spots of clipping in our previous histogram have now become massive spikes of clipped data. So when you increase contrast this way with levels, you clip your data incredibly, you lose a lot of data. So now all my pixels which had information about them before are now either pure black or pure white in these particular cases. So I've lost a ton of data, which is bad for image quality. Okay, so what about curves? Are you telling me that curves doesn't affect image quality or data quality? And that is what I'm telling you. Okay, so the way curves works is because these two points, unless you physically move them, are anchored to your white point and to your black point, it means that your white and black points don't change again unless you actually move them, which means that you can add contrast, for example, by sliding your highlights up and sliding your shadows down, and you'll notice that the clipping in my RGB channel never got any bigger. So even though I added a significant amount of contrast, I actually didn't clip any more data than I had before. Now, of course, you can do curves to an extreme degree where you see how now here the top of the curves maxes out on the window, and there you can see, yes, indeed, I do have clipping. But as long as the top of your curve doesn't hit the top of the window, or the bottom, you won't get clipping, which means you can adjust contrast, you can adjust color balance, you can adjust all kinds of things, brightness, as I said, color, color tone, color balance, uh, color intensity, and contrast without affecting your white and black points. So you don't get clipping, you don't get data loss. Now, it is important to note that you do get posterization uh, as the data spreads farther and farther apart as you add contrast. That's common in levels and curves. Unfortunately, you can't avoid that. The best thing you can do is make sure you're editing in a high bit lossless file format like a PSD or a TIFF at 16 or 32 bits. So there you have it. That is the difference between levels and curves. They basically do the same thing, except curves is way, way, way more powerful. So you should definitely use curves. The only reason I would recommend to use levels instead of curves is the interface is a little bit simpler. So if you're confused, if you're new to Photoshop, if you're not sure what's going on, sure, use a little levels. That's fine. That's totally fine. Okay, so use levels in the beginning because maybe it's less confusing than curves, but definitely curves is more powerful, more user-friendly, and is much better for preserving your image quality. So there you have it, the big differences. If you have a great reason to use levels over curves, I'd love to hear it. Put it in the comments down below. As always, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel and join the newsletter for more photography tips. You may also find this video interesting. Until next time, have fun and happy shooting.